Hi, I'm Dina Wakely and welcome to my studio. I'm so excited to tell you today about my new acrylic paint. It's ready, it's coming soon to a store near you, and it's awesome. So join me as I teach you a little bit about it and show you some of the things that you can do with it. All right, let's just do a simple painted background on, uh, on a manila tag. I'll have people sometimes be intimidated by acrylic paint, and you really don't need to be, because the answer to the question, what can I do with acrylic paint, the answer is yes. <laughs> you can do everything. You can make backgrounds, you can color and stamped images, you can create washes. Acrylic paint is one of the most versatile mediums out there. So basically, you already know how to use it. So I'm starting my, my tag with white gesso. Gesso is an important part to my working process because gesso is underwear <laughs> for your acrylic paint. If you, if you don't wear your underwear, you can get by, but something's not right. And that's kind of the way I think about gesso. If I start with gesso, it makes it so that my paint will glide on much more easily. It makes it so that I use less paint in my project. And it makes it so that my paint is the proper color because I don't know if you've ever painted uh, something and haven't primed it first with gesso and then the paint soaks in and you're finding you're really having to work and use a lot of acrylic um, or your paint changes color because your substrate is absorbing it and kind of changing it a little bit. So a very thin coat of gesso is all you need. People will ask me all the time, how long does gesso take to dry? And the answer to that is, where do you live? I live in Arizona, so my gesso is dry. In fact, this is pretty much dry, believe it or not, even though I just put it on. And it's so thin. I put on such a thin coat with the palette knife. So important to me that there's a palette knife in my line because I do a lot of painting with the palette knife and I always, always apply my gesso with a knife because the easiest way to clean your knife is to <laughs> wipe it off on your apron. So palette knife and gesso is kind of how I start most of my mixed media projects, including all of my journal pages. So I do journal that wonderful Dilutions journal, and I, I definitely prime my pages most of the time. So now that my gesso is on there, I can put some acrylic down. I'm going to use the large brush from my line. My brushes have a very stiff bristle. They're a, a brush that um, will kind of spring back at you. And the reason why I wanted a brush like that is because I like to see brush strokes in my art. I like to see the hand of the artist. I like that painterly look. And the brush combined with the heavy body paint ensures that I'm going to be able to see that. So my paint will come in a tube like this. It's important to me that the paint is in a tube because again I live in a dry place and every time you open a jar of paint air gets in there and air will uh, evaporate and dry out your paint. And I don't like to have dried out paint, I don't know about you. So because it will come in a tube, you'll be able to get um, very little air in the tube and the paint will last a lot longer. Also, you can just squeeze the t smallest amounts of paint out that you need. The paint comes out in a bead, so it will hold its shape, be nice and strong and then it spreads so easily. So even though it's a heavy body paint, it is not difficult at all to spread that paint around your work. In fact, students that have been in my classes this month have been using the acrylic and they've been amazed at how far it goes. You, a little bit goes a really long way. It's very pigmented and you just need a little bit to cover a whole journal page or a canvas or something. So there's layer one. I'm not gonna clean my brush and I'm going to come over here and pick up some turquoise. The, the first color was the lime. This is the turquoise, and I'll just kind of blend them into each other with my dry brush. Now, if you love a blended painted look, and you don't want to see brush strokes like I like, then you work with a wet brush. I tend to work with a dry brush, and what happens is that dry brush makes it so that I can see those patchy areas and see my brush strokes, but if you wet that brush and add a little water to your acrylic, it will blend in a lovely, lovely way. So there is a little bit of my background going on there. I'm going to wipe some of that excess paint off my brush. I'm going to put a little white right in the middle. The white paint will act as a highlight. So something that might seem counterintuitive to my paint line is that there's no black yet. When I had to pick my 12 favorite colors, 
Um, I didn't include black because the line does have black gesso, which, which I love and I use a lot. So when I need black paint, I turn to my black gesso because I do use black a little bit, but what, what the color that I use the most is called night. And it's this navy blue right here. And this night color is a very awesome dark neutral and it's less harsh than black is and I go through gallons and gallons of this night color so it was so important to me that my line have this dark navy and it's great for shadowing and highlighting so I'm just gonna put a little bit of the night and then I'm gonna rub it down night is not great for highlighting night is great for shadowing I just said shadowing and highlighting night is awesome for a little bit of shadow going on there. So just along the edge of my tag, I'm dry brushing a little of that night. One way to kind of um, amp up your art and to, and to make it more visually interesting is to make sure that you have enough shadows and highlights. So this night is a perfect shadow color. The white acrylic in the line is another great highlight color. Just So I go through tons of white and tons of night. And there is just such a simple painted background upon which I'm going to um, put a stamped image. Now you might wonder why I'm not painting this area. It's because I like white space. I always like a little bit of it to be open. It might bug you. That's okay. But it's going to give me a little area to put my bird. So I'm going to show you how I would paint a little stamped image with my line. So here's a little birdie done from the Scurly Bird set in my line seems to be a very popular set and I'm going to just give the bird a little bit of color and people think oh painting is hard and it's not when you do it Dina style so Dina style is a dry brush a little tiny bit of paint on the brush I'm using the the smaller flat that's in my brush set and I'm going to just dry brush some color and I'm going for a painterly look not a really blended um, perfect look I'm just going to keep it really loose. If I go outside of the lines, it's not that big of a deal because later I'm going to cut this little bird out and I, and I can cut away any of the you know, paint that shouldn't be there. So I've given him a little pink around his edges, a little orange. The great thing about making artsy birds for your mixed media projects is you can paint them colors that <laughs> don't occur on birds that you would normally see. Give him a nice little belly there. A little white paint in his belly will highlight it. A little bit is all you need. A little bit of orange on his beak as well. It's not going to matter that he's out, that I did outside the lines there again because I'm going to cut him out and that excess paint will go right away. Give him a little cheek. And then let's go back to that night. So remember I told you that night is a great shadow color. So I've got white there for the highlight. I'm going to come along and just the very small paint on my brush with that night is going to give him an even more dimensional look. So I'm ending up with a very painterly exciting looking bird that's going to go on my tag. Let me cut him out. So here's my little bird. I gave him a little branch of vintage sheet music to stand on and the quote from the stamp set is right there. He looks so great in the background. I'm going to use the small brush that comes, can't, comes with my brush set to paint a little heart on his chest. So there's a little heart on this chest, and I'll outline that with my favorite pen. So there is a little tag, and to make the tag really sing, I'm going to do white circles. My favorite circle is the bottom of a Dilusions paint bottle, so I put the paint on the bottom and then I stamp it onto my work use my finger there. It gives a really great circle. The circles help to draw the eye throughout the piece. Give a little visual interest. So 
So the last thing that I'm going to do is a little bit of that night paint on a dry brush through a stencil. This is my new plastic canvas stencil. Gives me some great texture. Can also use a blending tool, Tim Holtz blending tool, to put paint through the stencil as well. It works really great. So there's a very simple painted tag done with a new Dina Wakely Media line acrylic paint stamps and stencils.